Guys, am I actually doing this? Am I recording a YouTube tutorial wearing a Twitch t-shirt? Huh, so what's up everybody? My name is Danger Doug and today what we're going to be doing is looking over YouTube's live control room just so that you guys can know exactly how you can stream to YouTube. I've gotten the question here and there from a lot of different community members here and there about how to stream on YouTube. And it's not just Twitch streamers and Mixer streamers, but people who are just looking to get into streaming in general. So if you are a Twitch streamer or Mixer streamer, you probably see a little bit of a similar process here and there as to what we're going to be showing you. But for everybody else who's never streamed beforehand, let's check out exactly how you can stream on YouTube. So first thing that we want to take a look at is going over to our live dashboard. Now essentially you see mine right over here with everything that's going on from our um, last stream performance to the channel analytics, but on this left side toolbar over here where it says dashboard, you go one down to the video section, and that's where we're going to get into the live control room. So YouTube has two different sections here and there. There's the upload section for your video uploads for if you get like a 10-15 minute video for the most part, and then the second section is the live section. Now the live section, if you were to go over here to uploads and whatnot and go over to one tab over, is this other section over here that has all of your past streams right below it, but it also has your upcoming one, which is if you're just starting out, the current one that they're going to give you. So for this particular one, you can come up to edit a lot of your stream details for the most part by clicking on this details icon. You can do this in the live control room for the new one when I'm I just find it a little bit easier to update your information over here. So let's check it out. So essentially put the first thing that you want to do is go over to your title and if you had to change it and whatnot, you can change it right over here. Um, what my recommendation would be is if you're playing a video game of some kind, that the first thing that you do is say the name of the video game along with playthrough and then the type of medium that you're going through. So PC, Switch, doesn't really matter. Um, but the second section could be like a little fun section where you put in maybe like a little joke or something, or maybe do like a part one, part two, part three type of deal, along with another fun little thing to kind of dress up the title a little bit. Next section down here is the description section. So essentially put, you can put in a couple of paragraphs, and this is my recommendation, about what the video or stream is going to be all about. So like for instance, if you already know like what kind of passage you're going to go through in the video game, if you've already played the game before, would be to tell a lot of your viewers about a lot of the stuff that's going to be covering, at least in this gameplay that you might be seeing. Next thing you want to do is come down to your thumbnail over here. Now, if you're going to change it and whatnot, you just have to hit this one little options bar, and then you can either download or change it. For me, usually what I do is I go to change it, and essentially you can pick whatever um, thumbnail that you want to over these ones and kind of overlay it over that. Next, you have your audience, and essentially put as part of the whole COPPA uh, act that came out a little bit while ago, um, they instituted this change over here for YouTube. So essentially put, if you're playing an E for Everyone game, no problem whatsoever. You can select, um, yes, it's made for kids, but if it's maybe T for Team for the most part, or maybe a mature game, I would highly recommend that you select No, It's Not Made for Kids. Next, I would come down to Age Restriction for the most part, and for these ones, if you want to give an 18 up, like type of warning here and there, if you're playing a more mature game, I would select, um, yeah, restrict my videos to viewers over 18 in order to prompt them to actually select that one and whatnot. Um, otherwise, you can select, um, no, don't restrict my video to just viewers of 18 up and only. And last but not least, under more options, you can change the category of your streams over here. So if you're doing a cooking stream or a blog of some kind or um, something to do with like entertainment or education of some kind, I would change those to those categories. But if you're doing a gaming stream, you can select uh, the gaming category, and then from there, what I would also recommend highly is that you put the exact title of the game that you're playing. A lot of different indie game creators actually really do highly depend on this category, so for intents and purposes, make sure you get it right as to giving them proper credit for it. And finally, after you're all done, hit the save icon and you should be all set. But Doug, that's just metadata and all of the crazy stuff. I mean, where do we actually go to stream? Not to worry, I got you fam. Let's check it out. So the next thing you want to do is come out to this one that says View and Live Dashboard and essentially you click on this one and that's going to lead you to the new YouTube Live Control Room. So essentially this um, is going to come up and oh by the way, <laughs> huge kudos to YouTube for making this one in like dark mode and whatnot because that is way way better on my eyes than the Lightroom and whatnot. So along with changing the metadata over in the other tab, I actually find that a little bit easier than changing it over here and whatnot, but you can still do it if you were to go to the live control room and hit this edit icon and whatnot. So essentially you get this one um, track where you can change your different stream title, you can also add your description over here, um, same thing with your category, the game that you're playing, and your thumbnail as well. It kind of just put it all in one place for the most part, but I find it's a little bit easier to use the um, other mention in order to actually um, go above that one. But there's one more thing that I'd like to call your attention to as far as changing the metadata is concerned. And that one thing's actually done with this drop down over here where you can change your audience where 
most of the time, 99% of the time, I'll just leave it on public just because you want anybody to happen across your stream. But if you're running a special event for your community, what you can also do is come down to the unlisted category so that anybody who has your link can actually view the stream. It's pretty good if you're running a special event of some kind. And last but not least, you also have this one private view, which even though it's one of those things where only you can view your own streams, I actually find if you're doing like gameplay, for instance, and want to chop it up in Adobe Premiere Pro after the fact, you do have that option for YouTube recording your stream and whatnot, and just kind of like leaving it out there for you to download later if you want to kind of like have that just to just to have it. So now let's take a look at how you can get your stream set up in your broadcaster, whether it's vanilla OBS or if it's Streamlabs OBS. Let's look at how you can actually get this one done. So first things first, you have the stream key section that's down here over here with a lot of your sensitive information. Now again, this stream key um, is blocked off for a reason. Essentially, that's the unique identifier and code as to what your actual stream channel is all about. But what I would do is go down over here and hit copy. Now again, they have this little eye icon where if you were to hit this, it would reveal your code for sure. But just kind of leave that alone for the most part, unless you're verifying your code in your encoder. Next thing I would do is actually bring over your OBS instance. Now I've got it on record right now just for a screen capture, but what I would do is go down to file under your profile and go to settings. And then from there, this new menu is gonna pop up with general and all this other good stuff, but what you need to do is go down to stream. And for this, you have the different services that the OBS broadcaster can actually broadcast to. Now again, it has Twitch, YouTube, and yes, uh, Rip Mixer, um, but also Facebook Live and Twitter. Twitter of all places? Who knew you could stream on Twitter? I guess that was actually a thing. But for our purposes, we're just going over here to YouTube Gaming, so we'll just have that one selected. And then from here, you just copy, control C, paste in your stream key over here, and then hit apply, and then OK. And that's basically it. You're done. So from this point in standpoint, if you were to come over here to your control panel and hit the start streaming button, essentially put, that would mean that you're now live on YouTube. So from there, the only other thing that you need to do is just kind of add in all of your sources, like your video capture devices, like your main video cameras, um, your game captures, screen captures, and whatever else you need for your streams. And then once you all have that in your um, window over here in OBS, then you can hit the start stream button. And basically, you're on, kid. And that's it. Now you're live over here on YouTube. But let's take a look at a couple of the other features over from the live control room that are available to you, the creators. So when taking a look at this window, you do have your live chat over here, who's basically you know, whenever anybody shows up, they're gonna show up over here with this live chat room. But you also have your custom emojis over here. Now again, unlike Twitch and whatnot, Twitch actually has an advantage over YouTube in the sense that they allow their creators to actually come up with their own custom emojis. Hint, hint, YouTube, if you allowed that for a lot of your creators to do the same, it would actually make YouTube chat a little bit more fun, but Twitch does have the edge with this one over here. However, YouTube does have their own custom emojis over here. They're also accompanied by the regular um, just Google emojis for the most part, so anything that you're used to on your smartphone is pretty much there. But another thing that's available to creators is this webcam option over here as well. So let's take a look. Now the webcam stream option is actually a pretty simple option for the most part, where you just basically take whatever webcam you're using and whatever microphone you're using and going live IRL. So instead of actually going through an OBS broadcaster, if you didn't want to like mess with that or whatnot, and you just kind of want to put on a special event where it's just you, your webcam, and your microphone, and your audience, you have that option to actually go live over here. This is pretty good for the most part if you're just doing like a IRL stream here and there with your community or just running, running a special event of some kind, and then you just have a little bit of plug and play type of deal. The last option I'd like to show you guys over here is the manage tab over here, which essentially put um, allows you to schedule a lot of your uh, upcoming streams and whatnot. So when you select this, you can create all the same metadata that you wanted in a lot of the other streams, but essentially gives it a little bit of a timer or something leading up to the big day if you're running like a special event of some kind. This option is pretty good for the most part, but a lot of Twitch streamers, including myself here and there as well, will tell you that this is not really all that necessary, but if you want to get your community hyped up about a certain game that's coming out or a certain event that you're hosting, you can do this if you want to. Although usually a lot of times best practices, we usually put the word out in Discord or Twitter as to what's coming up, but you do have this option available to you. And last but not least, I also like to point out that the classic streaming window, if you were very used to it, is no longer available and that the live control room is basically the new way to go live and now the only way to go live. So for all of you guys who are big fans like myself of the classic streaming window, 
that is no longer available to us. However, with a lot of the different additions that they did make to their live control room, I have found out that once you get your stream keys added to your OBS windows and whatnot, that the stream's health did not suffer any sort of bits or whatnot, and you're pretty much okay. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, leave me a like on this video. And again, if you had any questions, don't be afraid to reach out to me either here over here in the comments section or in Discord or in Twitter. It doesn't really matter. Just send me your questions and I'll be sure to answer them as best as I can. And with that, happy streaming, guys, and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.